Oh, well, fancy running into you here. Let's be honest. We've all had a few bad bathroom experiences. You might have asked for extra hot sauce on your burrito and then found yourself stuck in the bathroom just like me. But sadly enough, we're actually the lucky ones. Being able to make dilutions in the lab and communicate about molecular concentration happens all the time in science. For example, in this cool 2021 paper, scientists were studying one of the causes of inflammatory bowel disease, or IBD. The scientists were studying a particular type of gut bacteria that they isolated from people who had IBD. They found two strains of the same species, one that had a thick capsule and the other one that didn't. Many of the people who had IBD, they also had the bacteria without the capsule. So scientists wondered whether the strain without the capsule was causing some of the inflammation that is characteristic of IBD. To test that, the scientists took either type of strains and put it inside mice that had no bacteria at all. After three weeks, they sacrificed the mice and removed the intestines to measure the levels of several inflammatory markers. Before I show you the results, let me tell you what this has to do with concentration and dilution. When they removed the intestines, there were multiple steps of washing the intestines with buffers to prepare them to measure the inflammatory markers. In order to be able to conduct this research, they had to be able to dilute concentrated solutions, which you'll have to do in the lab too. In this paragraph from the meta section, the scientists describe exactly the components of the buffer solutions. Notice that they describe concentration at least three different ways. And this component, FBS, they use it at two different concentrations. To be efficient, instead of storing multiple containers of the same solution but different concentrations, we store a concentrated solution known as the stock solution and then dilute it to our desired concentration. For example, when you're making a large batch of sweet tea, you dissolve a high concentration of sugar in a smaller batch of sweet tea and later dilute it into the larger batch. When you're making something like sweet tea, you can always taste it to see if you need to add more sugar or tea. But how can we dilute chemical solutions to our desired concentration? Obviously, we can't drink them. So let's say you start with 100% stock solution and what you need is a 2% solution in 700 ml. How much of this do you put in 700 ml to make a 2% solution? If that sounds hard to calculate, do not worry. I'm going to tell you about the solution that is going to be the solution to all of your solution woes. In this formula, M1 is the concentration of the solution that you're starting with, and V1 is the volume of the solution that you're starting with. M2 and V2 are the concentration and the volume of your desired solution. As long as you know three of the variables, you just plug and play. The important thing to remember is which numbers go where. So how do we know how much of the stock solution we need? We know that M1 equals 100%, M2 equals 2%, V1 equals X, and V2 equals 700 ml. Now we can just set up the problem. So 100% times x equals 2% times 700 mil. And with some basic algebra, we can just solve for x. Now we know that they used 14 mils of the stock solution to create the desired solution. To find out how much water or solvent you need to add to your starting solution, you take the desired volume and subtract how much you're adding to it. Following the previous example, 700 ml, which is your desired volume, minus 14 ml, which is the volume of your starting solution, equals 686 ml. So now you know you need 686 ml of water or solvent to dilute your starting solution to the appropriate concentration. Always, and I mean always, use clean equipment when extracting from the stock solution. If you use a pipette or a graduated cylinder that is dirty, it will contaminate the whole stock solution. 
and it will mess up everyone's data. Remember the methods section? Notice they used percent, but they also used mixed per mil, which is another way people use to express concentration. The cool thing about this equation is that you can solve for any of the variables, and as long as the units on both sides are the same, you don't have to convert any of the units. Let's say what you don't know is your final concentration. For example, you took 10 microliter of a 25 mix per mil solution and diluted it to 200 microliters. What is the concentration of your 200 microliter solution? So M1 equals 25 mix per mil. M2 equals X. V1 equals 10 microliters and V2 equals 200 microliters. 25 mix per mil times 10 microliters equals X times 200 microliters. And we get 1.25 mix per mil. If you don't include units, then you'll get a number and you have no idea what your answer means. This time, let's say you want to dilute 500 ml of a 0.57 molar solution to 1.5 liters. What will be the final concentration of that solution? M1 equals 0.57 molar. M2 equals X. V1 equals 500 ml or 0.5 liters, V2 equals 1.5 liters. 0.57 molar times 0.5 liters equals X times 1.5 liters. So now we know that the final concentration is 0.19 molar. The previous examples showed three different ways to express concentration. But as a bonus, I'm going to tell you about an additional way you can express concentration. Another way that scientists express concentration is by X, which denotes the strength of a solution. The working solution, which is what we refer to the diluted solution, most frequently used in the lab is 1x. If we need a buffer for gel electrolysis, we always use a 1x buffer. But it will be impractical to keep 20 liters or so much of it. So we use a concentrated solution, our stock solution, and then dilute it to our desired solution or working solution. And our equation can help us here too. So let's say I need two liters of a 1x buffer for gel electrolysis, but my stock solution is 50x. How much of the stock solution do I need to dilute to get to my desired concentration? Since the concentration is denoted by x, I will use a for the unknown variable. So m1 equals 50x, v1 equals a, m2 equals 1x, and v2 equals two liters or 2,000 mils, and 50x times a equals 1x times 2,000 mils. And now I know I need 40 mils of my stock solution to create my working solution. There are many other ways that scientists express concentration. But these four are used more frequently. Percent, mix per mil, molar, and working solution. Remember the cool paper? Well, when scientists measure different levels of inflammation in the intestine of mice that have been colonized with the bacteria that had or didn't have the capsule, in every case, they saw more inflammation when the mice had been exposed to non-capsulated bacteria. The different ways to express concentration help them make this discovery. And one day, you can also use this knowledge to make discoveries in the lab. 